What is going on, people of the internet? My name's Hypertheotic, with a K, double R, and welcome back, or welcome, if this is your first time visiting my channel. And in today's video, I kind of want to do a quick, right off of the top of my head, a retrospect of Phase 1 and 2 of the MCU, and just look back how far we've come when it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or not we, them, but still, it has come very, very far. Now, I'm going to be speaking from the opinion of just a, a regular, casual fan, primarily an MCU fan, rather than like a Marvel fan in general, because I've never gotten really too heavy into the comic books. In fact, I was too broke to even casually buy comic books, let alone had any in my area when I was a little kid. Uh, recently, I've been trying to get more into comic book lore, either by looking up videos of comic book lore or getting into the comic books themselves if I'm able to figure out the name of the specific issues and where within a said timeline, knowing how comics are sometimes, uh, they are within it, whether or not I need to get some extra context from another series of comics and then get context from another series of comics for that one. Uh... That, that did. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but for me personally, that's one of the struggles when it comes to getting into uh, getting into comics. For me, uh, that's one of the things that really prevents me from really checking out a lot of the past MCU comics and even DC as well, which is just how convoluted it is. Just following their primary timeline or storyline if it crosses multiple timelines or universes. That's. Just, I'm, I don't even want to get into the complications of that at, at all. But yeah, I'm just going to be speaking from the perspective of a casual MCU fan. The most Marvel I've ever gotten outside of the MCU is any of the animated stuff. Um, a couple of games here and there. Ugh, a couple of games here and there within my past. And uh, that's about it. Um, oh, and the X-Men films, I always forget they're Marvel. Uh, yeah, anything else that was Marvel, but not officially MCU, there, that's another exposure that I've had to Marvel. But other than that, um, you know, I'm not going to take those into consideration when talking about Phase 1 and 2. I'm just going to be speaking from the perspective as a ca of a casual fan of the MCU. N nothing more, nothing less. I might mention some of that stuff here and there, depending on the film. Compare and contrast, maybe, but that's about it. It's mostly just my perspective as an MCU fan on the MCU. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and just get into the first film from Phase 1. Iron Man. <sighs> Is anybody else getting a little bit of nostalgia when they just look at the poster? No? Just me? I don't know. There was something about that time that was... I don't know. It, I wouldn't say better. It definitely wasn't worse. But, I don't know. I guess sort of better times. Some people might just say it, it was because you were a kid with not so many responsibilities. Perhaps, maybe, I don't know. But I remember seeing Iron Man, the film, and just thinking like, "Oh, this is cool." The uh, Marvel superheroes getting official live action films. I wonder if they'll ever do this for any of the other Marvel superheroes. Many phases later, well, we know the end of result. And Iron Man, it was a really good film. I'm not going to lie. It was a pretty good film. Just, I know a lot of people didn't like the way Tony Stark was within this film. He was very, very arrogant and narcissistic. But that was kind of the point. That was kind of the point of his, uh, uh, of his character. And as we would see later on in the future films, he would just kind of develop out of that, that narcissism. And and that that arrogance, 
So, yeah, you know, that you didn't always like some scenes, some parts of Tony Stark, but that was kind of the point of his character. Is he started off as a billionaire playboy, arrogant narcissist, um, who made his money selling weapons that did lots of damage to people, probably innocent people, probably a lot of infrastructure that people needed, uh, and try to turn it around, make a super suit, and became a superhero. I mean, I'm pretty sure we all know what's up with Iron Man, and it was a pretty, pretty freaking good film. The action was enjoyable, uh, and of course, this was before they brought on uh, Don Cheeto uh, to be War Machine, or Brody, as he's known as, and they had, I forget the name of the other actor, and then when they switched it around in Iron Man 2, I was really, really confused, because I didn't understand um, why they switched him around, and I remember hearing a while ago why they switched him out, but I can't remember so even now, I still kind of really don't know. Regardless, I enjoyed Iron, Iron Man, and it was our start into the MCU. The Incredible Hulk. So a lot of people look back at this film, and they think like, wow, this film didn't really hold up that well, or... Wow, this film holds up pretty alright, better than kind of I, I, I remember it, but it's still pretty like mediocre. Or also saying stuff like, you know, th this film at least did, the Hulk, did more of the Hulk than what the MCU is doing right now. And I, I personally would definitely agree with that. And for me personally, when it comes to this film, I actually enjoyed it when I was a kid. I, I, I think I would probably say this for a good chunk of Phase 1, but mainly the Incredible Hulk, and also Iron Man, but mainly the Incredible Hulk, I would say I definitely have a soft spot for those films, even if some parts didn't age well, or in the case of the Incredible Hulk, people think the film itself didn't age well. And I'm not talking about, like, uh, CGI-wise, just in general. Personally, for me... I enjoyed it then. I still kind of enjoy it now. Yes, I can see its flaws and why it doesn't work for some people. Or why it doesn't work in certain objective ways. But subjectively, I still enjoy it. I still enjoy the film. Um, partially due to some childhood nostalgia. And yes, I did just say objectively and subjectively. Regardless of what a lot of people say, I personally, I personally agree. You can... Look at media in an objective and subjective way. And when criticizing media, you kind of got to... You, you got to go both ways when criticizing it. You can't just lean one way or the other. Otherwise, you just end up with some broken, unfair criticism. But... Yeah, I think, personally, sometimes you just gotta look at films objectively and subjectively. You gotta have a balance between the two. And objecti objectively, as a film, as a story, I can see the flaws and why in some parts it didn't work or didn't work for others. But for me, personally, I still enjoyed The Incredible Hulk. Iron Man 2. Um, I think just like with the Thor sequels, people did not enjoy the Iron Man sequels, um, very well. But again, since I did grow up with some of these films, I do have somewhat of a soft spot for these films. And say what you will about the villain of this film, um... Well, I thought the superpowers were cool. Uh, his motivations, I don't remember at all. His very character, I don't really remember at all. I remember how the actor looked like, how he sounded like in the film. Um, but the Mandarin, or the guy who was the Mandarin, was, for the most part, kind of pretty much forgettable, honestly. He was kind of forgettable. So I could definitely understand people's gropes with this film, for sure. 
Um, but regardless, there were a lot of fun scenes and fun moments in this film to the point where, like I said, I have a soft spot for this film. It Narrative-wise, it didn't do too well, especially with its villain, but it's still a very fun film that I like to check out every now and then once again. Because it's... Hey, this was early Marvel, early MCU. It is what it is. And for what it is, it was still a very fun film. Thor. Man, um... Again, I did still kind of like this film. It was decent. But... I'm not going to lie, Thor 1 was kind of forgettable. I mean, some of the dialogue for Thor was good and was memorable. It definitely set up his character very well. Some of the scenes with him and Loki when he was on Asgard, you know, those were were memorable. And they definitely did a good job at, at setting up Thor as a character, Loki as a character, and just kind of building up to what will happen to them in the following films. But for the most part, I think this is where, for me, something started to definitely get a little bit more forgettable. Captain America, the first Avenger. Man, um... A fun action superhero World War II film. We're probably not going to get one of those for a very long time. I mean, hell, I wouldn't be surprised if people are sick of World War II media in general, between films and games especially. Like, if you were to look at a list of any, just all the World War II video game titles that are out there, uh, there are a lot. Like, a lot. I I think you would be surprised to be able to find a developer who hasn't tried to touch World War Two in some way, form, or fashion. I'm primarily thinking about first-person shooters, but there just are a shit ton of World War Two games in general out there beyond just shooters. And then media in general from just... I don't even know where to start. There's just so much World War Two media in general. But when I really look back, I don't really remember too many World War Two superhero movies, at least in... In the same sense, the same tone that we got with Captain America, the first adventure. So, for being the one of its kind, it was definitely a fun film. And some moments were definitely memorable. But, uh, eh, it's another origin story. It's another superhero origin story. It is what it is. But, you know, you definitely really get a sense of Steve's values when you when you watch his film and, and what he you know what, what he cares about what what matters to him as far as values I mean all these that's what all these films are they're they're superhero origin stories building up these characters representing who they're supposed to be at the beginning of the stage of the phase so what else are you to expect from these films. They are what they are, and for what they did, I think they, for the most part, did it well. And, for the most part, I still enjoy them nonetheless. But yeah, Captain America, the first Avenger. It would have been nice if we got a little bit more with Roger, with Steve Rogers being in you know, in World War II Europe. But, uh, I don't know. Um, I think you get more of that and I think Peggy Carter's show because I remember there being a show of Peggy Carter uh, back during the 1940s and 1950s. I've never checked it out. After I heard about it being on uh, ABC, I just completely forgot about it because I wasn't really that interested in it at the time or even now uh but yeah it, 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 it is what it is for what it is I like it 
And it's the only World War II superhero film that I can think of that exists, at least within modern day cinema. Avengers. I mean, man, it was all building up to this. And regardless if you saw it in theaters or had to see it at home or you had to yo ho ho that motherfucker. Oh my god, I, I think we can all say for sure we all enjoyed this film. I remember when the film just dropped, a buddy of mine was talking about it. We were in line waiting to get into school. And he, he was kind of spoiling, spoiling it for me. But with the way I was kind of picturing it, it wasn't exactly how it turned out in the film. In fact, I kind of thought it was a bit better. And I'm always one that's that's had a bad memory. So I'm not always very good at remembering spoilers anyways. Like, depending on the spoiler and depending on the show and what you're spoiling, you know, it might stick with me and I might be like, fuck, man, this, this it, it ruined it for me. It ruined the surprise. It ruined the, the build-up, the suspense, the drama, whatever the case may be. But more often than not, when I've heard a spoiler for any sort of media, by the time I finally check it out, I don't. I don't remember it at all, but I might still remember the hype I felt when hearing about it. And when he was talking about it, I was getting a lot of hype to see this film. So when I finally saw it, oh my God, I was by myself watching it, but regardless, it felt like an event. It probably would have been even better had I watched it in theaters. From what I constantly heard from people, the Avengers films would have been perfect to watch in theaters because they were just such an event. But regardless... It, it, it was, it's the fucking Avengers on the big screen. I loved it. We all loved it. And even to this day, when I, whenever I happen to catch the film, just playing in the background of some TV, when it, whenever somebody else is watching TV, I'll sit down and, and watch for a little bit, sometimes all the way to the end, because, hey, it was just that much of a good film and a good time. All right, then. On to phase two. Iron Man 3. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to lie. Iron Man 3 is a little bit more forgettable than... Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I confused the plot for Iron Man 3 for Iron Man 2. Um... Who the fuck was the bad guy in Iron Man? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry. I completely mixed up the plots. You probably already noticed that I, mi I mixed up the plots for Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3. So, take whatever I said for Iron Man 2 and just apply it to Iron Man 3 because I was talking about Iron Man 3. For Iron Man 2, let's try to go back to Iron Man 2. Uh, oh, that's right. Uh, Whiplash. It had a lot of fun fights and fun CGI, but for the most part, the film was actually very forgettable. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the fact that I confused the plot for part two with part three, I think goes to show just how forgettable the film was. But when I think back to it now, remembering and realizing that I mixed up the films, it did have some fun, awesome scenes that just like with part three could have used a bit of a better narrative so yeah there you go i accidentally mixed up the plots of iron man 2 and iron man 3 and in my personal opinion iron man 2 is a bit more forgettable than iron man 3 though it still had some fun moments regardless thor the dark world hmm well, uh, just like with Iron Man 2, it had some fun scenes. And I think this is around the point when we started setting up the Infinity Stones. And we already knew who, who was coming for, the, for them stones. So I think for that reason alone, it is somewhat of a decent film. Because I think it sort of did a somewhat decent setup. 
of the reality stone. I think it could have done better setting up the reality stone. Uh, in fact, I think we probably got a better representation of what the reality stone could do in, what was it, Avengers Infinity War, I believe? We'll see what happens when, when, I, when I get to uh, Phase 3. But, yeah. Uh, it was the film that was supposed to st start our setup to the Infinity Stones. And I do remember that. I do remember some of the fight scenes. And I do remember the bickering between Thor and Loki. They were very much entertaining. And I think we were all genuinely surprised when we thought Loki was dead. Until that end credit cut scene. But regardless, there were some fun moments in Thor The Dark World. But like Iron Man 2, for the most part, it was just very forgettable when I really think about it. Hmm. I think I still got a soft spot somewhat for some of the films in Phase 2, just like with Phase 1. Not as much, though. And again, they're just some of them are a little bit more forgettable. But this was early in the phase, and... We were still kind of basically setting up our character even further after than what, uh, uh, further on than what we got in Phase One Avengers. Captain America: The Winter Soldier. Okay, so the plot, some parts of the plot were somewhat forgettable, but not completely. But man, this was just. Just the action in this film was just going, 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 just nonstop. You know the the stakes were high, the 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 concern for Bucky from from Steve was felt real, and that one scene with him trying to hold back the chopper from flying away. I mean that scene will live on forever. Like just. <laughs> Women loved that scene, and guys were just, I don't know. But, yeah, this was definitely a fun film, and I think unlike the sequel films for the other heroes, Iron Man and Thor, um, this one did a better job, and it was more, it mem more memorable, even in a narrative sense, and more entertaining, at least in my personal opinion. Guardians of the Galaxy. Man, when I first heard about this, I would I didn't know who the hell they were until I started seeing some videos uh, of their comic book lore. And then I started to gain some interest and was actually kind of excited and hyped to see what we, we would get from these brand new characters. And needless to say, I was pleasantly surprised. We got Space Outlaws just saving the motherfucking galaxy. And it was fun. We, even though we got, like, what, one, two, three, four, five characters on screen that were meeting for the very first time, I think they did a decent setup of each of their characters, their personalities. And each of them definitely had a say. Uh, a line in in that film that was very memorable that people may still be quoting to this day because you know the, the, it wasn't the longest movie in the in the world it, it wasn't a very long film uh everybody managed to get you know their time in the spotlight but regardless their roles were memorable and entertaining and I think just like a lot of you I just love this film it, it's just, I cannot wait to see more from the Guardians of the Galaxies. Galaxy, sorry. Avengers Age of Ultron. There ain't no strings attached on me. Man, I remember hearing that in the trailers. It actually gave me some chills. And, well... I gotta say, this film was very much entertaining, and it really, I mean, it really made Ultron feel like a threat, I'll say that much. And it introduced us to Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch, a character who at the time I thought 
was decent and was starting to, to gain a liking to her. Not just because she's eye candy, but I mean, don't get me wrong. All of her costumes throughout the MCU lately have been fucking mm, god damn, just. But beyond that, I actually enjoy her as a character. And when I did eventually see WandaVision, I was really starting to gain a liking to Wanda and wanted to see more from her. Until Multiverse of Madness, but we'll save that for when I eventually talk about Phase 4. And I have yet to even touch on Phase 3, which will be in another future video. But, yeah, Age of Ultron, I definitely freaking enjoyed this film. Um, would, I, I find it funny they called it the Age of Ultron when... The motherfucker only let, uh, but what was alive like maybe at most a week or two? But then again, this guy was exposed to the internet, all of the internet, all at once, very, very early in his existence. Is it any wonder why he just wanted to obliterate the planet? He took a good look at the internet and just said, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah no, no. Humanity gotta go. No, they gotta, they gotta go. What, what's this shit I hear about E621 and, and Twitter? And No, y'all gotta go. Y'all gotta go. All of y'all. The, the, the weebs, the furries, the, the, the neckbeards, the feminists, the woke, liberals, conservatives, y'all, everybody. Everybody gotta go. Everybody got Humanity ain't worth preserving. All y'all motherfuckers gotta go. That's it. We're dro I'm dropping a meteor on this bitch. <laughs> Definitely a fun film. So... I don't know what to say any further. I enjoyed it. And it brought back the Avengers. Now, I know some people definitely made some good criticisms about this film at the time in ways that we could have, well, had a somewhat of a better narrative and set up uh, to have Ultron come back later on in the future, which would have been nice. I'm not going to lie. It would have been nice to see more of Ultron in the future. In the later phases, I should I should say, but for what we got of him in this film, I enjoyed it nonetheless. And man, this was just a peak of MCU hype. <sighs> we weren't even anywhere near meeting Thanos yet. I mean, we've already, we've already seen him before, but we were we had yet to be introduced. Ant-Man. Well, this one's technically another hero, superhero origin story. But when you really look at Ant-Man, what he does in the film, he's still a criminal. I mean, he's literally hired to steal from the Avengers base. But for the most part, he was a good guy that ended up doing a good thing near the end. But, given the way Ant-Man was presented in his film, I feel like he would fit more of the role of anti-hero. Or at the very least, I feel like that label fits him more, given what he does in this film, more than superhero. He is still technically the good guy, the protagonist, but I wouldn't really consider him a superhero or a hero, uh, but more so an, an anti-hero. Even then... For what it was, it was fun. I feel like this is where we started to get more and more of our dose of MCU humor. Which, in this film, I thought was alright for what it was. Again, I enjoyed it. It was a very fun film. But it wasn't very memorable. For the most part. The technology was. The characters, not that much. But, for the actor who played Ant-Man, I think he... I think he did a pretty good job for the material that he was given as far as the writing, the directing, and whatnot. Oh, and I remember when I heard about the actor becoming act, uh, Ant-Man uh, and all the workout he had to do to get his abs only to get, like, only, what, one, count it, one scene where he's shirtless for no more than 
10 to 15 seconds at most maximum a minute if lucky not that I was really excited to see him shirtless but see here's the thing I don't seem to understand lately when it comes to these MCU workouts for the actors why do these motherfuckers gotta get buffed as shit like these guys are Spartans already getting ready to go to war they gotta be abbed out as shit muscled up as fuck straight straight bulking the fuck out but then you only see these motherfuckers shirtless for no more than 15 seconds to a full minute I don't get it and then we're not allowed to even get a little bit of boob window in the female characters oh my god give me a fucking break look again for for all the fem- for all the uh, actors um what do you call it uh their, their costumes for the characters, they're all good. They're all fine for what they are. Phase 4, um, some of them do look wacky, specifically referring to Thor Ragnarok. Uh, but for the most part, their outfits are still pretty decent. They're still cool. One, the Maximoff. I think her outfits, from all her scenes, from all the films, her show... I think all her her uh, outfits are actually pretty freaking cool and well designed for her character. But at the same time, don't get offended that oh I, 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 we got to see a little bit of of Scarlet Witch cleavage. Oh no, oh no! But then these motherfuckers are forced to do these extreme workouts so you can show their abs for fifteen seconds. 15 seconds to no more than a minute. I'm not really into mask dudes. I'm a, bi- a bisexual guy, but I'm not into masculine men. I'm not into muscular men at all whatsoever. Give me a twink any day. But if, if you're going to make him do all this fucking workout, this extreme workout that I, from what I've heard a lot of the guys hate, to get these rock hard fucking Greek god level fucking abs and muscles, then god damn it, you might as well have them shirtless for a full fucking 15 minutes doing some straight hardcore macho action. Like, just come. I don't. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. If you're gonna make them do all this working out to get this body. That they're not even going to be able to keep because it's too much work to keep. Why are you only going to show them for 15 seconds? I know that's a weird rant. But it's like... Just, you might as well just... If you're only going to show it for 15 seconds, just then just CGI the bitch. Just CGI the ads on and don't force these poor guys to go through this full workout to get these rock hard abs that they show off for 15 fucking seconds but then complain that guys don't even get a little bit of boob window like what the and what about what about us the buys can we not get the best of both worlds like what the fuck again I'm not into muscular men but it just it just seems so ridiculous either let's just let them not have to do these crazy ass workouts and CGI their fucking abs if you need them shirtless that damn bad. Or show them for longer than 15 seconds because all that working out for their body to be a prop, you might as well show it for more than 15 fucking seconds. And I, I want people to stop fucking complaining about a little bit of cleavage on a female character when these motherfuckers are constantly being shown off head to toe, sometimes butt fucking naked. For no more than 15 seconds after doing a six months to a full year workout. Like, what the fuck are you putting these poor actors through? Weird rap, but that's just something I wanted to bring up. Especially about Ant-Man. I know it's, it's weird, but it's like 
cool. She did this whole workout to be a superhero, but she only showed him shirtless for 15 seconds. My guy, you didn't need to do any of that workout. We barely even fucking see your ads at all. And honestly, I've forgotten all about that suit. Because at that point, it's like, ooh, cool. You got abs now. Rumpa bump bump. Good for you. Like, I don't give a fuck. Get on with the film. But regardless, it was still a, a fun film. I just can't help but but look at look look back at that film and think about how this motherfucker had to get a workout probably for six months straight for fifteen seconds of ab footage. Like <laughs> what, what the who what the fuck are they thinking at, at Disney? Like I don't I I don't get it. I just don't get it. Anyways, that has been my quick, right off the top of my head, retrospect of Phase 1 and Phase 2 of the MCU. What did you guys think of Phase 1 and Phase 2 back when you saw these films? And what do you think about them now when you look back at them, when you watch them again? How do you feel about them? Do you still feel the same way uh, back when you first watched them? Or do you have... A different opinion, a different perspective now, looking back at the film. Uh, especially being an older kid or an adult now. Because I can definitely look back now at some of these films as an adult and see their flaws more. See where some parts of it worked, some parts didn't. Why some parts worked for others. And those same parts don't work for other people. Uh, I, I think you get my point, but uh, it is what it is. They were entertaining times, and I could still look back at them with some fun and nostalgia. And even then, looking back at some of these movies, they're still fun films. Which is not too much you can say about some of the stuff in Phase 4. We'll get into that when I eventually talk about Phase 4. Originally... Originally, I was only supposed to talk about Phase 4, but then I decided, fuck it, let me just do some quick videos for Phase 1, 2, and 3. So, this has been my quick retrospect on Phase 1 and 2. I will see you guys next time for my video on Phase 3 and Phase 4. For specific stuff within Phase 4, I actually want to do some uh, videos on, like WandaVision and multiverse of madness and for right now those are the only ones oh that and what if and what i would want from Marvel zombies other than that that's really it they're just going to be retrospective uh, of the whole phase in general and i'm only going to choose very specific media within that phase that i want to talk about that i'm going to talk about specifically you know again wandavision but with that said that's the end of my retrospective of Phase 1 and 2. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video or agree with any of my opinions, leave a like. If not, leave a dislike in a comment telling me why. Any and all interaction is good interaction for my channel and the algorithm. And any and all criticism can help me get better. I will see you guys next time for my videos on Phase 3 and 4. My videos on... WandaVision and Multiverse of Madness and I did say uh, a while ago I was going to do my final Makes No Sense videos on the Star Wars lightsaber yeah I'm actually going to push that project back a little bit further because I'm struggling to get my thoughts together on that topic so until I can eventually get my thoughts together properly for that topic I'm going to just push it back and take care of some other projects till then so yeah, see you guys till then. Uh, chaotic out. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. Even if you didn't enjoy it, I really do appreciate your time and your view. Chaotic out. Have a good one.